Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his Monday guest, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? Doing great. Good to see you. Yes, man. So uh, one thing I did that I actually want to pat myself on the back is about 90 days ago, I was just having one of those days thinking about black swans that could come out of nowhere that would surprise people. And I actually pointed to the Chinese real estate and debt markets as my most likely candidate, right, of all things going on. Lo and behold, out of nowhere, Evergrande pops up, $305 billion, missing debt payments, all of that, highly levered. Uh, I had, j- to be clear, I couldn't have picked Evergrande out of a bag. Of, bag. I didn't know anything about it, right? I was just looking at big, big markets. So it's not like I saw Evergrande coming. But I wanted to talk to you about how connected the world economy is, what is going on with that property developer, which we've talked about. They have assets. It's not a Lehman moment. But do you see Chinese real estate problems somehow coming coming west and, and impacting the U.S. in any way? What, what, what are you thinking? No, not at all. I think... Um... Number one, it's small for the, you know, real estate valuations in China, you know, for their their economy, their GDP. And then for that company in general, like you said, they have other assets they can sell off. They've got 50 billion here, 30 billion there, yeah. you know, things like that. So, you know, when that first came out, I think you and I were on the video and I said, you know, it's not a big deal. They'll work, they'll work through it. Mm-hmm. And so will the lenders, you know, the bigger the debt problem, <laughs> the more leverage you have. Yeah. So, you know, they're, it, it'll get worked out, but I don't think the rest of the world is at, as ex, as as is as exposed to China as it was to the United States back in 08 09. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, you know, I think any country can pretty much tank and it's not going to take out generally the world economy. Ch- China's a big one, mm. but you know, they they're big enough to where, you know, they can contain something. Now, what we don't know is how fully levered up that, you know, the banking system is over there. Right. Um, Do they have yeah, CDOs we were, and all of those insurance policies on insurance policies? Right. Yeah. And with the moves that they've been making lately, just, you know, shutting companies down and restricting things and, mm. and stuff like that. You know, it's it's almost like they're trying to shut their economy down. That's really interesting. Yeah. They Well, they are going hard and fast to uh, be, they want to become the number one socialist country out there. It's, it's a model that, frankly, I think if you look at history, is proven not to work. Um so it's going to be interesting. So, well, what, I mean, what's interesting to me is they want to become the world's reserve currency with the digital oh, yuan and all that kind of stuff. No chance. Now. Moves, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, they never did be, to begin with. Mm-hmm. But even now, with the moves they're making and the things they're doing, you know, nobody trusts you oh. know, China. Yeah. You know, most countries don't trust each other anyways, but yeah, the exactly. whole world there's not a lot of trust. trust. <laughs> Usually it's not everybody, you know, yeah. <laughs> collectively agreeing we can't rely. Yeah. rely on them or the value uh, of their currency. And that's funny, you know, for their goals and aspirations, it's really interesting to see what they're doing because they're, they're not heading in the right direction for what it is they want to do. I, I agree with that. So let's, so I'm going to break down Evergrande as, as I've done more research on it. First and foremost, it's not a Lehman moment as we've talked about, but just want to say again, they own physical assets. Those assets can be traded for something. They may have to sell them at a discount of 60 or 70% or something. They have a lot of power. Uh, with their lenders to, to uh, recast. It looks like a lot of their debt, the foreign debt, collectively speaking, is relatively small. And frankly, given what you just said, what's going on in China today, they are fine punishing foreign capital. They're like, we're not going to pay you. And you know that, that, uh, that capital will uh, just simply not be repaid. So I don't think Evergrande, I think Evergrande doesn't exist in 90 days, certainly nowhere close to the form it is today, as they just sold 51% of their property division. They sold a bank stake last week. I think they're just raising uh, cash, frankly. So yeah, I don't think Evergrande is going to be, a, be anything. However- That's why the government hasn't stepped in over there yet. They, yeah. they knew. They're like, these guys have assets. Let them figure it out. And let their creditors you know, kind of work it out. Yeah. That's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Pick off the little pieces. So, mm-hmm. um, But the thing I want to talk about, because we sort of hinted at about China just changing and making a hard turn and, and going the socialist route. My f- well, I think there's two things that happen. I think um, any foreign capital now knows they're not going to be treated well. So any investment in China is going to, from foreign countries, will require a significantly higher interest rate and covenants and other things. Uh, do you think that is a um, easy ramification to pick? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. There, you know, there's a couple of companies over there right now in the process of raising capital. Um, some Chinese companies, Volvo, mm-hmm. for instance, is a Chinese-owned mm-hmm. company, and they're mm-hmm. in the process of raising capital for their EV division. So it'll be interesting to see how, like, you know, how the debt markets respond and, and the commercial paper markets respond to that. Um, 
And, you know, just on another note, I don't, know, I don't even know if you know today, but, you know, they halted um, Evergrande's trading mm-hmm. on the stock market over there as, as well as a few other companies. So, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how can an investor invest in a company when, you know, you, you can't get your shares, you can't liquidate <laughs> your shares if you need to? Yeah. yeah you know, that's what's going to happen. So, yeah. Um, so that's so that's kind of a layup call for me. I, and I think capital is always that way. If, 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 <coughs> if, if foreign or any investor deems you risky, they want, they want a higher return. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, you know, it's why you have a paper, B paper, paper and junk, <coughs> right? The higher interest rates. But here's the big one. I don't, I don't have a great handle on this one, but so I'd love your thoughts. I believe what is going on in the China, Chinese managed economy is actually having an outsized impact on Chinese citizens, specifically the middle class. Think about what they've done to the middle class just in the last seemingly 60 or 90 days. First off, they whack tech. So if you were a stock market investor or even a tech employee and you had your money and sh- company shares, uh, they've whacked a trillion dollars of equity right out of the stock market, specifically Chinese tech stocks. Then I think they went after uh, education companies. Then they went after video game companies. Now they're going after property developers. And property is very interesting because the average middle-class Chinese citizen, based on an article I read, owns 1.5 homes. So they actually own more than one. So they are highly levered to the property market. And what I think is happening right now is the dominoes are falling in the property market. Uh, they have some of the highest affordability problems, right? It's like 40 to one average income to property value. If their, if their real estate market hits 20 or 25 or 30% correction in the next year, I think a large percentage of the Chinese citizens simply stop spending and start saving more, which is just going to have a, a huge ripple impact because they are so big on the entire world economy. Am I, am I overthinking that? You know, it's, it's an interesting contemplation um, and what their goals really are. I think, you know, they're obviously trying to redistribute wealth over there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the real question is, what's the real impact of the real estate market over there? They're already tearing down major buildings because, you know, um, the Chinese government went on a spur of building just huge, massive cities and building all this inventory. And I've seen them. The population at the same time. Yeah. And they wouldn't let people buy properties. And now they open it up and they force their citizens almost to buy properties. And mm-hmm. there's no renters, there's no buyers. And now, now they're just, you know, getting rid of them. So I don't know what the real effect of that is going to be, but yeah, whatever it is they're trying to do, it seems to be that they're doing the opposite. Yeah. And again, I've always studied consumers. My whole, if you were to, if you were to say, Hey, what do you look at? I'm trying to figure out what the, for me, it's the American consumer. That's where I live. That's where I invest most of my money. But that logic I think holds in any country because the consumers are the largest, at least in most countries, I'm going to assume it's true in China, the largest uh, part of GDP, gross domestic product. And if people get scared, and I think the middle class, the ones with investment capital, the ones with stocks, the ones with you know, tech jobs or whatever it is. I believe they feel like they're under attack. I think they feel like uh, the country is going to take what they've worked hard for. And A, they're going to look to move it out as fast as they can, legal or illegally. And B, they're going to stop spending. And if they stop spending, I think China could have a recession, which is crazy to think about, right? China used to think 8% GDP growth was slow. What happens if they have a negative 2% growth? I mean, what would I mean? The shock waves of that'll be crazy. Um, and but well, then the economy is already about. slowing down. You know, it, I mean, I'm not there. I, you know, I don't live there. Mm-hmm. You know, so I really don't know what the average middle class, you know, citizen in China is no, thinking. We're, we're we're clearly guessing. We're two white guys you know, guessing how, right? how they would be feeling. But I would, you know, to put myself in their shoes, if I had a government doing what they're doing, yes, I would be hoarding cash. Exactly. And, you know, not spending to make sure that it, whatever get, happens, mm-hmm. I had some options. Yeah. And let's be clear, you would literally, or at least I would be, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'd be hoarding cash. I wouldn't be putting it in the system, right? This would not be money in a bank. This would not be money in the market. You've already told me, Mr. Central Government, that you can take whatever you want. So I would literally hoard cash or gold or something, right? I would literally- well, and their latest moves are really interesting because they're, you know, they're trying to eliminate crypto and, and the <laughs> people's ability to hold that, which yeah. is transact, outside of the period. Yeah. Well, that's money outside of the government. So yeah, when you exactly. say hoard, yeah. So at least at one point they could put it into that, exactly. you know, into cryptocurrencies. And now 
they're they're trying to eliminate their ability to do that we'll see if they can fully completely do it but i mean over there man you get thrown in jail you know yeah yeah they don't mess around <laughs> yeah right they, yeah, they, they'll they... come they'll come snatch you out of your house so um you know it's it's really interesting but to me yes i'd be stuffing you know a mattress a pillow and then how are you going to protect that you know yeah uh, you know so very interesting times over there and i still i really don't get it they want to be a world superpower. They want to be the largest economy in the world. They want to be a leader of the of the free world, but yet they're doing all these things that are just exactly the opposite of what they say they want to do and be. I, I don't know, man. And you know, at some point, you know, who knows? Maybe they're setting up and preparing for war. You know, by isolating themselves and uh, you know things like that. Oh, I know. Scary. Yeah, there's worries of them. Was it Taiwan? Taiwan, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that where your wife's from? Yes, exactly. Yeah. We talk about that probably more often than I'd want, but that's a scary thought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, again, I'll just say, cause again, my wife's from there. I've been to Taiwan. I've been to Taiwan and China multiple times, right? China proper. And um, I think if they go after Taiwan, that's the beginning of um, significant confrontation. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating times. And, you know, they're definitely preparing for something and this isn't a conspiracy thing, no, I, conspiracy I, thing or whatever, but they're reigning in control of their citizens in preparation for something, and it's not growth. Well, that's funny. I, I think they think it is growth. I think their warped logic is like, we're going to whack the top 10%. We're going to give it to everybody else. And suddenly everybody, you know, the average is better. I mean, that's, yeah. that, that, that watching, works good you know, on this paper. This the Chinese so. Communist Party, the Chinese government, Correct. not the Chinese people. So no, we're no, about. we're talking the like... Communist Party uh, and what they're, you know, what they're doing. CCP, and, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, it will be a case study. I at this point, Greg, I think the best case China can hope for is a lost decade. I think that is the best outcome they could hope for is a Japan like environment. I actually don't think that's very likely. I think they're going to have a nasty recession, and could be their own. I mean, I've I've studied the depression in my time, and and a lot of what caused or actually didn't cause the depression, but a lot of what extended the depression was government choices that were wrong well i can tell you right now they're alienating themselves i guarantee you behind closed doors you know other nations are talking oh yeah china needs the world the world does not need china yeah so it's gonna be very thing that they're going to realize at some point is that china can can be completely cut off from the largest economies in the world because stuff could be manufactured elsewhere yeah Um, you know that they can be completely shut out of the game and i think they're testing that threshold yeah, very cool. Well, I look forward to episode number three, but before we get there, how can people find you? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. All my info's there, YouTube channel, podcast. Go check it out. Very cool. Thanks, buddy.